Nowhere in this country, from sea to sea, does nature comfort us with such assurance of plenty, such rich and tranquil beauty as those unsung, unpainted hills of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania author, Rebecca Harding Davis. H done. H to the done. H D O N. It's got many names, but a bunch of travel calls it one of the coolest small towns in America because you can get a good cup of coffee. And in their words, we have more art galleries than country stores. Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to Huntington. I'm going to be one of your guides today, one of three guides, in fact. And we're going to be taking you on a walking journey of downtown Huntington. We'll cover 11 points of interest and hopefully share with you the history and flavor of Huntington. And we'll be covering about a mile's distance along the way. Tour should take about 90 minutes. Now we're at our first stop here on the corner of Washington and 6th Street. This is a gathering place, a place of, of gossip, if you will. And, well, while we were talking about gossip, did you know that Huntington's original name was Standing Stone? It's true. But we'll talk about that a little later at a, at a different stop. For now, I want to talk to you about the, the town's founder, William Smith. He named it Huntington really to honor one of his benefactors. When someone sends you a gift, you generally send them a thank you card. Well, when the Countess of Huntington funds your expedition, it is common courtesy to name the town after her. Smith laid out Huntington about nine years before our country's own independence. Giving cycle continues, and another man was honored from Huntington County by having a university named after him. He dropped a large chunk of change to start Purdue University. That's right, John Purdue was born in Huntington County in 1802 before his family moved westward. Now, John wasn't known for attending church himself, but he was well known for contributing to a lot of church programs. Speaking of which, you're standing across from the most Holy Trinity Catholic Church ever. Jesuit missionaries were sent to the area in colonial period. They were very interested in incorporating and evangelizing the Native Americans. They took an active interest in their native languages and culture. They even performed their first baptism here before William Smith even came to the area. Now, if you look down the street, you might be able to catch a glimpse of the Clifton Five Marquee. This theater was brought in in the early 20th century. In the 1930s, it was considered illegal to conduct business, including screening of films on Sundays. Well, the theater found a loophole and began having midnight showings, making it technically on Monday morning. Now, whoever had time to go on that late to a film on a school night, well, that's almost more of a mystery than the ghosts that are said to reside there. But don't go looking for any ghosts because the paranormal investigators that go there from time to time say that the ghosts, well, they have to get to know you before they show signs of themselves. I love it when you ghost whisper sweet nothings in my ear. There's also a ghost at our next unusual stop, Leah's Vintage Art Glass. I'm going to stay here and finish my coffee, but I'll let you mosey on down the street to meet your next guide, Miranda. See you soon. <laughs> 